Hi, I'm Garrett Town with AM Solar, and today we're going to be talking about solar charge controllers. The main function of the solar charge controller is to reformat the power coming from the solar array and feed it out to a battery bank in a way that safely charges the battery without overcharging it. If you connected solar panels directly to a battery bank without a charge controller, the solar panels would eventually bring the battery bank up to the open circuit voltage of the solar panel or ruin the batteries, whichever happens first. Neither is a good scenario. There are two main types of solar charge controllers, PWM and MPPT. PWM is usually the less expensive, more simple style, and it operates by, sending, by doing a pulsed connection between the solar array and the battery bank. As the battery bank gets, reaches a higher voltage, as it gets more fully charged, those pulses will shrink in length until it eventually becomes an open circuit as the battery becomes fully charged. MPPT charge controllers, on the other hand, are much more complex and they basically have uh, like a transformer between the solar array and the battery bank that allows the solar array to operate at one voltage and the battery bank charging portion to operate at another voltage. With a typical solar panel that we use on our installations, the solar arrays prefer to operate at about 18 volts and batteries charge at around 14 volts for easy numbers. Um, when you use a PWM charge controller, you force that solar array to operate at around 14 volts, but it's much more efficient when it operates at about 18 volts, and that efficiency translates to about a 20% increase in output performance with an MPPT charge controller. MPPT charge controllers are also usually uh, manufactured with a higher quality um, they last a little bit longer, but they're a little bit more expensive. If price is a consideration for you, I tell people get a MPPT charge controller if your array is over 300 watts. If it's under 300 watts, you're probably going to be fine with a PWM charge controller. When choosing a charge controller for your project, there's voltage and current limit considerations you need to take into account. Uh, let's start off with the voltage consideration. So, on this charge controller, a Victron Smart Solar MPPT 100-30, the 100 stands for the open circuit voltage maximum of the solar array. So that's 100 volts. Uh, our, our panels are typically about 22 volts open circuit, so you wouldn't want to have more than four solar panels connected in series, otherwise you risk exceeding that voltage and damaging the charge controller. Another thing to consider is the array short circuit current. For this particular ZAMP 90 watt panel, it's 5.4 amps per uh, parallel connected panel. Some charge controllers have like a 60 amp limit, so you probably won't want to have more than 11 of these panels in parallel on a charge controller with a 60 amp current limit. Let me make sure my math on that was right. 11 times 5.4, yeah, 59.4, perfect. But the most important consideration has to do with total array wattage and how that relates to the output current limitation. Uh, I have an equation I use, which is uh, total solar array wattage times 90% divide by battery bank voltage gives you charging current. Uh, for example, if you have four 100 watt solar panels, that's 400 watts times 0.9 charging a 12 volt battery bank gives you uh, 30 amps. So this charge controller can handle four 100 watt solar panels. So with four 100 watt solar panels, your current, as shown current versus hours in the day, is going to have a curve that looks something like this, where it peaks around noon and then goes down as the sun goes down from about 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you put more wattage on the charge controller than uh, 400 watts, say you put like 400 and, or 500 watts, you're going to have a curve that's a little bit fatter and it levels off right at that 30 and then goes down. In most cases, it's not going to damage the charge controller to have a little bit extra up here. You're just not going to be able to take advantage of this area right here, but you get to have all of this 
plus all of that. So oversizing your charge controller or your solar array to your charge controller isn't necessarily a bad deal. It just means that uh, for this short segment of time, you might have spent too much on your solar array, but you're doing good on this part. Another thing people worry about is, what if I have a really big charge controller with a small solar array in case I want to expand my solar array later? That's no problem. This charge controller, the 150-70, we say it can handle about 950 watts. You could put a single 90 watt panel on there and it'll work just fine and it'll give you plenty of room for expansion. It's not very cost efficient, but uh, it will work electrically. So for some common uh, wattage versus charge controller uh, rules of thumb, for a 30 amp charge controller, we tell people probably around 450 watts maximum. For a 50 amp charge controller, about 680 watts. For a 70 amp charge controller, about 950 watts, and there's a lot of other sizes of charge controllers, and uh, you know, like the 100 amp charge controller, we tell people you can go up to 1400 watts. But these rules aren't black and white. If someone were living in Arizona or uh, driving to Arizona frequently, we'd probably make that number a little bit smaller for solar wattage versus charge controller amperage. And if someone was in Alaska, we'd make that number a little bit higher and give them, uh, you know, maybe like 550 watts on a 30 amp charge controller. Because the solar charge controller is responsible for charging the battery, you need to make sure that you can program the charge controller specifically for the type of battery you have. Uh, I really like the Victron system because you can log into it with a Bluetooth connection and it lets you have fine control over all the parameters. So for this particular one we're dealing with a lithium battery which has an absorption voltage of 14.2, an absorption time of 2 hours, a float voltage of 13.5, and no equalization. You'll want to double check that your settings for your charge controller program uh, line up with the type of battery you're using, you know, that'd be flooded, AGM, or lithium. And some charge controllers, like cheap, cheaper charge controllers, you have maybe a one preset option or a dial that gives you three options. I really like Victron because it lets you get exactly what you want, which is makes your batteries last longer. It's really healthy for them. For monitoring a charge controller, there are several options. Some of them We'll just have a couple lights that change colors depending on the mode that the charge controller is in. Uh, this particular charge controller uses those lights or it can talk to a remote display like this one. Um, this is another type of remote display for a charge controller. Some charge controllers have the display right on them and uh, some of the larger Victron models have a clip on display that can go right on the charge controller. Um, Here's another Victron option that we really like. It's a full color animated display that tells complete system status. And my favorite is the Bluetooth app that I showed in the previous segment. One of the most common mistakes people make when they connect their charge controller is getting the polarity mixed up. If you mix up the polarity on a charge controller, you could ruin the charge controller and you could ruin solar panels. Don't do that. Double check everything before you make a connection. Another common misconception is people uh, mixing up uh, input current to the charge controller and output current from the charge controller. Charge controllers are rated based on output current. So a lot of people think, well, I've got all these panels uh, that have a nine, they give off nine amps, so if I connect them all in series, I'll only have nine amps going in my charge controller, so can I just use the cheaper 15 amp charge controller? No, you can't. That has nothing to do with what comes out of the charge controller because an MPPT charge controller reformats that energy and makes sure that about 14 volts are going out and a current proportional to the wattage is coming out. So you need to be thinking about output current using that equation we talked about earlier. Total array wattage times 90% divided by charging voltage gives you the output current which relates to this number right here. Never series connect panels on a PWM charge controller. When you series connect panels, that increases the voltage. And like I said earlier with PWM charge controllers, they send a pulsed direct connection to the battery. So if you have uh, two 100 watt panels connected in series, you're dealing with about an operating voltage of about 36 volts going onto a 12 volt battery. Your solar array and your battery are not going to like that. It's going to be a very inefficient system that will eventually result in damaged batteries or a damaged charge controller or both. I hope this video was educational. If not, just call us and we'll help you select the right charge controller. Thanks for watching.